Hi everyone, we're going to be looking at the goodness of fit test. Recall that the null for the goodness of fit test is that the variable follows a certain distribution. For example, we might wish to test that the null of the random variable following a normal distribution with mean of 0 and variance of 1. So here that's an example of where the random variable is continuous. We could wish to test that the random variable x say follows a discrete uniform distribution. So here so with the goodness of fit test we can test whether the random variable follows a certain distribution, discrete or continuous. And the alternative hypothesis is that the random variable does not follow that given distribution. So this test is to test for a single variable, that that single variable follows a given distribution. Right, we've all seen in the textbooks, standard textbooks, that this is the test statistic. OI is the observed number of cell of counts in cell I. EI denotes the expected number of counts in cell I if the null were true. So the idea is that if the null is true, that the differences between th for each cell between the observed and the expected should be, in an ideal sense, zero, because they should be this, they should match. Okay. So you can see that the bigger this, uh, bigger the differences are, means that there's more of a mismatch between the observed and what you expect to see if the null were true, and hence you would, and then you know, you would reject the null. So if the test statistic is large, you would reject the null from what we've just said. Anyway, that's what not, I'm, I'm not here to give you a lesson on this goodness of fit. In I'm, I'm here to answer this question here, which is to show you that there's a simpler formula if you had to put the numbers through your calculator. And it's this one here, which we're asked to show. Why is it simpler? It's simpler because we don't have to compute the squared differences. Okay. Now some of you will recognize that the idea of not having to calculate squared differences is similar is basically the idea that was adopted for the sample variance, which we'll note at the end. Okay, so here's one I've done earlier. This proof. Obvious thing to do, expand out the brackets. Squared term there like this so and then next take divide this into the three fractions like so now certain things cancel which I've done here the E cancels with that E that EI cancels one of those EIs now we note at this stage that the sum of the observ observed values across all cells categories and the expected and the sum of the expected cell counts must are the same like so which we denote by n so in the question n is the total number of observations okay that's all this is always true so we can substitute this up to here because that's how we get the n there also we can note that the first term here is here, so we don't have to touch it. So then let's make that substitution after we take through the summation sign. So let's take through the summation sign first, and then we know that sum of O observed cell counts is N, sum of the expected cell counts is N, so minus 2N plus N is going to be minus N, done. Simple proof. Okay, and then just to mention what I've said before, the idea of this proof is similar to the case that we encountered for the sample variance. Look at this. Recall that the formula is this, which is involves the sum of squared differences. I said this is, you could do this on a calculator, but uh, it's much faster if we re-express this so that it's not in terms of sum of squared differences like this. And we have to do the same proof here. You know, expand out the brackets, take summation signs through and simplify. 
So it's good that I can tie those two together so you can see that the idea is that you know, it's uh, this idea can be used in many places where we see this sum of squared differences. Okay, well, one thing I hadn't planned on, but I have might as well point it out, because my pen isn't really working well today for some reason, is this here. I just want to look at... Oh, yes, point out two things. First, this sum here, just because I haven't got brackets around here, it just means that it is just on the first term. So it's like that. Okay, so that's the first important thing, because some of you probably... not might uh, not know that. So this sum here is only for the first term because I have not used big brackets around there and around there. Meaning, specifically, I haven't done this. But, you know, I'm not doing some of that. It's different. That's not what the formula is. The formula is just the sum of this lot and then at the end when you've done all that, then subtract from that n. Okay, well, Recall I said that if the null is true that the test statistic will be very small because the sum uh, say that the observed cell counts is equal to the observed cell count. So let's say if the null is tr true 100% for sure, observed value for cell i is equal to expected value of cell i, what would happen to this test statistic? Okay, the smart ones of you will see it straight away that is zero. Well, can you prove why? Yes, because look, OI over EI minus N, if the null were true, uh, I mean, if OI is equal to EI, which means that null is true for sure, just replace that OI by EI because they're the same thing. So that would be EI squared minus EI minus n. Okay, well, EI can cancel one of those EIs, but what did we just say about sum of EI? Why, you know, because if you see that, you'll see why this is zero. Well, let's go back up here. What did we say about sum of EI in terms of n? Well, it's n, yeah. So hence, n minus n, alright? Just in case you have problems with sound, let's write on this for sure. If OI equals EI. Okay. So, it's, uh, you know, given that's a way to kind of understand what you're doing. Look at the formulas. The formulas trying to tell you something. Think about different scenarios. Think about, you know, when does that uh, test statistic, when is it small, when is it large, and that will give you an idea of how the thing is working. Fantastic. Right, I'm Phil from statisticsmentor.com.